Hi, my name is Andrew Kinney. I'm an attorney at Holden Law Offices. I've been practicing in the area of Social Security Disability Law for, for since 1992. Uh, this is one in a long, a long series of videos exploring Social Security, explaining it from the ground up. My goal is since uh, I do about three to four hundred hearings a year and, and I do a lot of work in this area, but I'm limited. I can't get and explain as much as I can to everyone. So with the, the, the wonderful benefit of media here, we can expand that out. Um, this is Social Security Disability 201. There's a series of Social Security Disability 101 courses that describe basic concepts. We're digging further in, and here we're going through an overview of the appeal process. Um, there's an application stage, and there was a video on that uh, recently. Reconsideration stage, another video I did, and now we're talking about a Social Security hearing itself. Um, here's a little more in-depth understanding of what's going on leading to a Social Security hearing, okay? So, keep in mind, if someone is chronically ill, let's say they have COPD, they used to smoke a pack a day, we'll call her Jane, and Jane stopped smoking two years ago and still has a chronic cough, all right, and the susceptible infections, and let's also say there's some circulatory issues, okay, some trouble with leg swelling. Um, we have someone like that applying, let's say they're about 45, Jane, with this fact pattern, would likely be denied application and reconsideration. There will be doctors for state agencies making the first two decisions that will review the record, um, pull things out of the record out of context, uh, usually, and then there will be some acknowledgement of leg swelling that's intermittent, um, and um, there will be a lot of effort into giving summaries that downplay the problems. Now, the state agencies can make good decisions and I won't need to look at them because they'll, these people will be approved. Um, but what is very obvious is when someone has leg swelling that's ongoing, there's a problem. It's edema. You'll see it in the records. Well, let's say this Jane has gone to the application, got denied, appealed within the 60-day time frame. Um, for instance, we do internet appeals for our clients. Then at reconsideration, she weighed her out. Let's say we got a letter from her pulmonologist, the, the, the lung specialist, that emphasized that her, her breathing is labored and she might need oxygen. Well, that'll be ignored too because she doesn't actually have it. Um, so we have application reconsideration denied. Um, I'll even go further. In this example with Jane, Social Security has a listing or definition of disabilities. They're called listings. Um, there's a pulmonary listing for how bad do your breathing or pulmonary function tests need to be to be defined as disabled. What I commonly see is an error at the first two levels, and I'm happy to point it out to anyone. Um, I, I see it all the time, and it's an it's a elemental error. Um, at the first two stages, if someone doesn't meet the definition of disability under the listing for the breathing test, the numbers for the FEV and other numbers, if they don't meet those criteria for the listing, they ignore that they have the problem at all. Social Security has to consider not just whether you meet a listing at the lower levels, but they also have to consider whether you can maintain the pace and persistence of a normal full day, even sedentary. So. We have this person named Jane then waiting another year, okay? So we have probably uh, a year and a half to two years to get to the hearing. By then, we might have gotten input from the pulmonologist that was ignored, uh, that she can't go upstairs, that she's short of breath, again, susceptible to colds, may have swelling, there's sense that maybe creatinine levels are up for kidney problems, whatever is causing the swelling, some vascular issues. By the time we get to a hearing, we actually have further problems, so I guess, to the, in the defense of the state agency, some people's medical problems do get worse by the time they're at a hearing. And if they're approved uh, based on a later date when they're disabled, uh, well then that would explain why they're denied at the front level. But on, on a whole, um, the, first two level, the first two levels by the state agencies is a filtering mechanism and it's ineffective. So with here, the, we get to a hearing level and then we have a social security judge. I'll, I'll pretend I'm the attorney. Uh, I'll be able to discuss with my client, I'll see how we help make sure the record was complete, we got input from a doctor about limitations, we're at a hearing level, we might get more input from a treating doctor, we may even, we'll make sure to re-update the record. Social Security is required to update the record at the hearing level, they're mandated in fact by regulation and by federal case law. Uh, um, but the push and tug of things, generally the hearing offices may or may not update a record if someone's unrepresented, so heads up. If you have no rep representation, Better plan on getting the medical records yourself at the hearing level. In fact, what you'll see, some hearing offices give notices that say that it implies your obligation without outright saying it. Um, that is in violation of the law, but the problem is, is that they don't have an attorney to point it out. 
once someone has an attorney, we take it upon ourselves at the hearing level to get it ourselves. We rely on Social Security to order the records at the lower level, and we rely on us to get it. Um, and um, I've taken some cases that got to a hearing level, someone's unrepresented until right before the hearing. I don't see anything updated. It is Social Security's obligation um, to update a hearing record. With that said, get an attorney and have make sure they're updated in the hearing record. Make sure they know changes of address, because now two years has gone by. Some people are homeless, some people have had to live with other people's couches. There's a lot of problems that happen for the delay here, especially if we get rid of this step. Uh, people that are homeless might at least get a fair hearing. The hearing level has a judge, it's a private conference room, it's roughly 45 minutes to an hour. Um, there are judges across the country, as I've stated in, in um, uh, previous videos, but in essence here we have a judge dedicated, an administrative law judge, to hearing hearings. Um, and they're generally reasonable, there's some exceptions. Ultimately with the judges, they're sitting with us talking through um, the medical limitations you have. I'm pointing out in this example with Jane, the pulmonologist report saying that she might need oxygen, she has trouble walking half a block, things that were ignored at the lower level. Um, I'm pointing those things out and if I were to prove that this 46 year old now, she was 45 or 44 when she applied, if I prove that she's not able to do full time work, and the swelling has increased, I might be able to explain to a judge that there is an error at the lower level, which is again very common, or that they were the, the swelling or the cause of swelling was more clear later on. We amend or change when someone's unable to work. Amending an onset is what it's called. So you, in essence, you'll have attorneys at the Social Security hearings dealing with the law, dealing with arguments, oral arguments, written arguments if the judges need them, and also pointing out um, uh, the relative strength of the records and weaknesses. I do point out where a record is weak, although ideally you have an attorney pointing it out to you first. If you have a, a psychologist that doesn't write much down, you can meet the psychologist once a week, but it won't have a, make a difference in Social Security's world unless there's detail in the notes that discuss what the psychologist is observing and uh, diagnosing you with. So the big picture here, to broaden this out, is that the strength of the evidence dictates uh, how your hearing will go ultimately. Um, judges can approve or deny the decisions in writing and you usually don't expect a decision at the hearing itself. Um, with Social Security hearings overall, the idea is to get help. Um, if you wish to have an attorney, you need to make sure to ask for one. Secondly, if you wish to have a certain attorney in a large firm, make sure to at least try to ask for that attorney. Uh, also, with a Social Security hearing, you want an attorney that's been doing this work perhaps at least three years um, or to be fair, if someone's newer, maybe they're spending a lot of time, at least half their time, doing Social Security work, maybe if they're newer. Um, you may be able to compensate for inexperience by, by sweat. Um, um, an attorney that has been doing hearings for five years and, and practices in, air, in this area fairly regularly is a fairer bet to find exceptions and understand and work with judges than someone new. It has to be a judgment call on your part, but it's fair to ask questions about how experienced the person that will actually be hearing is. Will they be an attorney? And if they're not an attorney, how long have they been doing this? If they are an attorney, how long have they been doing this? See a theme. That's an overview of what to expect. Um, at the overview of application reconsideration and hearing stages. Hopefully it's not too cynical. The message here, again, as I mentioned before, if you can work, you make more money, work. If you can't work, well then you need to make sure you get good treatment and you get good representation. Um, again, my name is Andrew Kinney. If you have any more questions about Social Security Disability, you can call our offices at the bottom of the screen. Thank you.